Hey everybody, welcome back to Listography. Jason and Joe here, and today we're gonna have a discussion about the new Rolling Stone magazine top 500 greatest albums of all time list. This is their third update of their list, which they first published in 2003. They uh, revised it in 2012, and now this is the second revision. Uh, so <sighs> these sorts of lists always raise a lot of controversy. People are outraged at placements of certain things, and this should be there or shouldn't be there, or this should be higher or that should be lower. It's always interesting to kind of take a look and, and debate, but I guess I would kind of like to maybe more talk in a more broader sense about just these kind of lists in general at first. Do they matter? Do they not matter? Any thoughts? Oh, well, I got some thoughts. Um, I mean, these lists basically exist to to get reactions like we're about to give to the list. I mean, there's no way they can be complete. They're always going to have certain viewpoints that kind of dominate uh, certain styles. Some genres barely get mentioned at all. Some, I think, get overrepresented. So, I mean, these lists are always kind of fun to read, but there's there's always some just like weird, really weird kind of picks. This one in particular, I think the, the update got some really weird stuff. They need a little more quality control, I think, on this one. The first time I look at these lists, I'm always like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm outraged. I have to tweet about it. And then I kind of calm down and sort of think things through. Um, and there's a ton of bad stuff on this list. It's pretty terrible. But I, don't know, I, I think it, it's good that they put them out there. It's good to see kind of what people think are classic albums. Um, and I, I think it's good that they sort of got some new, younger, hipper judges for this one. Although they, did, they didn't do a good job, but it's still interesting to see kind of what the next generation is thinking instead of sort of like the generic, you know, you're gonna have 15 Beatles, 15 Bob Dylan, blah, 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 you know, 12 Neil Young. It's interesting to see kind of what is sneaking in there as far as what people think are classic albums of the past uh, 30 years. So this one definitely has more black artists, more female artists. I think they made a point of kind of getting more representation, which isn't a bad thing at all, even if I have some, some quibbles with many of their picks and sort of the things they still leave out. I mean, it's, it's Rolling Stone. They hate metal. They hate, you know, hard rock for the most part. So, you know, you're not going to get those, but it is interesting to see kind of what got taken off, what got added on, what decades are best represented. So it's, it's a cool list. It's fun to talk about. I don't think anyone should be ashamed if they, you know, don't like some of the, the recent additions, if they're conflict in their heart about not thinking, you know, Kendrick Lamar is in the top 100 or whatever. It's perfectly fine. Um, it's a rational thought. I had the same thought. I don't know. It, it's good to kind of just wrestle your own internal demons about where things belong. And, you know, just because it's not part of my culture or my taste um, doesn't mean it's a bad pick. So I'm sure we'll get into some of that more later. Kind of my big issue with it is that there's 300 people that voted or over 300, something like that. They each made a top 50. And for me, that is too large of a sample size. I'm sure at some point on listography, we'll make a top 100 or 200 or 500 or whatever it is. So there's nothing, I don't think people shouldn't make these lists, but I think, you know, we're, we're attempting on this channel to cultivate an audience that knows and understands our tastes and then when they see our list that will mean something to them coming from us but a pool of 300 artists that you don't really know everyone who voted you don't really know how they were selected to vote or why it's it's ends up making the list kind of meaningless and i don't know you might as well just randomly pick any 500 albums at that point. Yeah, I think the big thing about that, like when you have so many people, and like there's some just like really bizarre ones on the list, like uh, 491, Harry Styles, his recent album, Fine Line. Like somebody probably just had that in their top five. No one else had it at all, but the way they kind of weight things, that's gonna show up. And it's just such a, a ridiculous choice to be on here. 
considering all the albums you had to leave off. I mean, that, honestly, that one kind of stuck out to me more than almost anything else. Another weird one was Britney Spears' Blackout at 441. Like somebody had to have that at number one because, I mean, critics didn't like that. Nobody liked that album. That's such a bizarre, like if you're going to pick a Britney Spears album, pick like the first one because at least it has some kind of historical significance, you know. It was a bajillion seller. It was, you know, ingrained in American culture. But you pick like her fifth album that came out that, you know, can anyone name a single song off that? But it's just like weird stuff like that where somebody must have voted it really high and just kind of threw everything off whack. I think at that point, an editor has to come in and be like, you know, we're just going to pretend like that one never happened because it's that's kind of embarrassing, I think, to the list. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather see a, a, like a panel of experts in rap music make a list of the 100 best rap albums or experts in metal make a list of the 100 best metal albums. Having it so broad and open to all genres, I mean, you, you end up then just with ridiculous picks, like you were saying. Yeah, I mean, there are some, some weird kind of like newer stuff shoehorned on, like uh, Daft Punk's um, Random Access Memories at 295. Like that was a couple of years ago, like, did that make a huge deal? The critics didn't love it. I mean, they, they liked it. It was okay. But I don't think there's anyone in the world. I mean, somehow it stuck on this list. So it was buried on somebody's list, you know, in the top 10 or something weird like that. And like, you know, they put um, Madonna's Immaculate Collection, which is greatest hits at 138. Uh, and there's, there's a bunch of like greatest hits and kind of compilations, which I don't think should be on here at all. Just take all of those off. That's sort of cheating. I mean, I don't see how you could say, okay, a Madonna's greatest hits collection is the real thing, but we're not going to put anyone else's greatest hits on it. Like, where does where's the line? Does somebody was like, oh yeah, sure, Madonna, Macula collection, great. There has to be some sort of like editorial guidelines, I think, for this one. If you're going to make it so broad and include so much more and some you know new people, younger people, because otherwise you just kind of get this where it just seemed like it's completely just made up for the most part. See a quick uh, breakdown of the albums by decade and how many uh, releases from each decade made the list. One noticeable thing that stands out to me is the number of records from the 50s that have fallen off since the initial 2003 list. Uh, initially, they had 29 records from the 50s on their first list, which was 5.8% of the total list. And that is down to nine albums. I mean, obviously, the, the 50s aren't a big decade for the LP. But I, I don't know. I feel like we're losing, if we're really talking about the best ever, or we're losing some of those like very important groundbreaking records and, and supplanting them with records that haven't really had to stand the test of time yet. Yeah, I think another thing I would do for something like this is exclude all albums made in the past I don't know, five, ten years. It's just so hard to judge something that came out last year. Unless you're just saying, hey, these are my favorite albums of all time. Here you go. Here's the list. There's no weight or I'm not thinking about, you know, cultural impact or you know, anything like that. Just here you go. Here's my favorites. You know, you have to wait at least some period of time before you declare something to be, you know, the greatest or or whatever. So I, I didn't like that. I don't know. I mean, that, I think that would have taken care of a lot of the sort of like really noticeably bad ones. Like you have a lot of sort of safe picks, like Synchronicity at 159, uh, Hotel California at 118. Like, I don't know. You, you have sort of like a this bad mix of like, very kind of not really greatest, but just kind of wanted to throw them on there for representation. And then sticking with kind of like the old tired classics. Um, you know, I, I don't think Police Synchronicity is the 159th greatest album of all time. I definitely don't think Hotel California is the 118th. I don't think there should be three pavement albums on this list. I think that's ridiculous. I think putting three big star albums on this list is ridiculous. You know, there, there's only one Kate Bush. 
Uh, only one Fleetwood Mac, no Stevie Nicks solo. I think that's ridiculous. So I don't know. I mean, three Fiona Apple in the top 500. Mm, I don't know about that. So I don't know. I mean, there, you can kind of quibble with everything like Californication at 286. No, sorry, wrong. Alana Del Rey uh, from like last year in the top in 321. I think Alana Del Rey is my biggest gripe on the whole list. <laughs> I and hey, I love Lana Del Rey, but there's no way that that album is the 321st no. best of all time. I mean, I listened to it last year, and she's an artist that I don't dislike. Every time she puts an album out, I'll listen to it. It was not in my top hundred of last year. It's insane see, that that is 321. See, I, I love Ultra Violence, and I would have thought that would be a much better pick than Norman F. and Rockwell. Casey Musgraves at uh, 270 is ridiculous as well. Yeah, I mean, there's, like, there's, I think there's five, there's six Kanye West albums on here. And I'm a huge Kanye West fan. I would have three or four on here probably, but, like, six Kanye West seems like way too much Kanye West for a top 500. Maybe, like, two or three Kanye West. I think is as much Kanye as, as this list could handle. And I'm, I mean, I'm fine with Marvin Gaye at number one. Uh, spoiler alert. Wouldn't be my pick. I think I would stick uh, Pet Sounds at number one. But, uh, you know, Marvin Gaye is probably a top ten, I think. Especially when you, you know, maybe not my favorite of all time, but as far as cultural significance and everything else, and I, I think that's a perfectly acceptable number one. Joni Mitchell at number three, Blue. Again, you know, that was, I think, sixth on my 1971 list. It's a fantastic album. Maybe not the third best of all time, but you know, I'm not going to quibble with that. So, I mean, there's plenty of fine things with this list, but there's just too much. You know, I think there's only two Elvis Costello on here, maybe three, which not enough Elvis for me. One Van Halen, one ABBA, My Chemical Romance, Black Parade at 361, which I love, but I, again, I don't think it's the 361st greatest album of all time. I have a little problem with that one, although Miracle Upon Miracle, Rush actually made a top 500 list for, for Rolling Stone, which I never thought I'd see the day, but uh, Moving Pictures in at 379, so, you know, I guess that makes up for leaving off every other prog rock band in existence. Uh, I think Yes snuck on there, but there's no Genesis, there's no uh, Emerson Lake Palmer, nothing even close to Prague, really. So that's, you know, that's, that's another kind of genre that Rolling Stone just chooses to completely ignore. We can kind of leave it there. I want to point out one more major glaring issue I had. And it's, it's always when two albums are right next to each other that you really notice the, uh, <laughs> the inaccuracy. But having Taylor Swift's Red a spot ahead of music from Big Pink really kind of hurts. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about Taylor Swift at 99. Um, that's outrageous. I also think having Drake in the top 100 is outrageous. I even kind of like Take Care, but there's two Drake albums on the top 500. I think he's one of the lamest rappers in existence. Here, I'll give one for the, the other side. I think Let It Bleed at 41 is way too high. That album has two good songs and a bunch of not that great Rolling Stones filler. So if you're looking for something sort of, you know, from the classic white male rock milieu that's rated too high, there you go. Let it bleed. Get it, get it the hell out of there. All right. For me, I, I would say n uh, number six. Never mind. Mm. The sixth best of all time. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay, well, what's your what's the best on on this list? What's what's the most appropriate? What do you kind of anything you appreciate? I was glad to see that something anything is still on the list. It's at three something, but I was worried <laughs> that that would be one of the ones that got knocked off with that. The I think there's like a hundred some ones that weren't on it before. So yeah, I don't I don't even think Toys in the Attic made it from Aerosmith. I don't remember seeing it now. Rocks, Rocks is on there. Rocks was yeah, but no. I do like that they included uh, the Gilded Palace of Sin, even though it was way up at 462. 
Flying Burrito Brothers. There's just so much you could sort of rag on for this one. And one thing I did want to mention in 2000, I don't know when exactly it was, NME made their own kind of counter list to uh, Rolling Stone because they called Rolling Stone soulless, canon-centric, the same tired old titles. So NME did their own list and it's totally just off the wall. And I, I think uh, they had The Queen is Dead at number one. But they had some really weird stuff too. So it's kind of hard to get these giant poles right. Um, theirs was an enemy journalist past and present weighted list of their own 50. That's what I'm talking about though. More, I, I, if you read NME, you kind of know their angle on things. And if it's all their past and present writers or whoever, that list is going to make sense. If you like NME, then this list is going to be albums that maybe you want to explore. Right. I don't know. I don't know who's going to really like dive into this top 500 list and you know really get much out of it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's mostly for show. I think we can all agree that there's not a lot of you know interesting choices on here. There's not a lot of kind of you know it's it's very kind of on the surface. Even the rap albums are pretty much what you'd expect. Um, you know, there's, you know, kind of the usual bunch of Jay-Z, Outkast, Kendrick Lamar. There's nothing sort of underground or kind of cool or something like, oh, hey, I've never heard of this album before. I'm going to go listen to it. It's, it's pretty much just stuff that you'd expect and a bunch of new stuff kind of shoehorned in for no reason. People can let us know what they think down below. You can... Uh... Um, I'm sure they're going to be less pleased with the list than we were. I think we were very sort of uh, diplomatic with with our uh, uh, criticism today. I mean, I don't have a ton of issues. Most of what is there is what I expect to be there, but it's just so uninteresting. <laughs> like, what's the point is, is my, <laughs> my big <laughs> takeaway is what is the point of this? Stay tuned. For the listography, favorite albums of all time lists coming eventually. That'll be fun to do. <laughs> Anyways, again, leave comments below. Hit like. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Uh, make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications. And we will see you in the next video.